Hello, this is Scott Buchena, editor of Telecoms.com here at Network X 2024, and I'm delighted to be speaking to Santeri from Cujo AI. So Santeri, I understand a lot of what you're talking about at the show this year concerns something called purple. Um, perhaps you could just start by um, introducing us to that and then telling us about why Cujo AI works with that and, and what it says about your overall strategy. Yeah, so, so Purple is an open source foundation. And it's actually kind of a toolbox. It has the Purple OS, which is an operating system stack for, for network service providers to build their routers. But it has also a lifecycle management component. It has a mesh component uh, and it has a security component on it. So I, I would see it really as a, as a toolbox for, for network service providers to build their, their stack. Purple has been around as an open source foundation for a while. Uh, and it's kind of a high time for us to, to join it. It's uh, soon gonna have its first routers out there at the market. That's the promise from large uh, network service providers in Europe and in the US to launch Purple to the market in the first router. And uh, we have been in this open source uh, train already for six years uh, with another open source foundation called RDK or RDKB. Uh, we are deployed in uh, 60 million routers globally, of which uh, 40 million are RDK routers. So we have, been, we have been kind of doing the work that we now will do also for Purple uh, on our behalf. And uh, obviously our customers are asking that could Kujo solutions also be available on Purple because uh, some of them are considering Purple as their future okay. operating system. Okay, and then um, sort of drilling a bit more down into Purple, could you talk about any uh, like few, uh, upcoming features or, or improvements or developments on that platform that, that we should be aware of? Well, uh, there's, Purple is uh, based on standards. And, uh, and a lot of the things that Purple is talking about is under development. Uh, a, right. lot of is, a lot of it is getting ready. Uh, but I would say, in a short, they, they are implementing the, the standards of uh, Broadband World Forum and uh, Wireless Broadband Alliance in, in real open source stack. Uh, Lifecycle management, uh, mesh, uh, would be the, probably the most important ones. Not to forget the operating system, uh, which is based on kind of standard TR181 model and, and, and UCS, uh, which, which helps operators to manage the routers. Okay, so a lot of this is, is saying like smart home to me, because one thing I've learned from the show is there's been a lot, lot more talk about how routers or some people call them gateways, maybe they're slightly different things, but how they're bringing more and more value and, and getting more sophisticated, having more local processing and all that sort of thing. So could you talk a little bit about um, the, uh, the role that Buffalo plays and, and Cujo AI's uh, role in the smart home and, and how that's going to evolve. So, so the big promise that Purple has, uh, and I think it starts uh, realizing it, is to enable application ecosystem uh, for, for routers or CPEs yeah. or routers, however, yeah, yeah. however you want to call them. Uh, so, so added value service providers like us that provide device identification, application identification, security, digital parenting, on to for the home have a, have kind of easier job to release our applications because we can release them as containers. Now containers came to cloud already like yeah. a few decades ago. Uh, and now for the last five years, there's been a lot of buzz containers coming to these routers. And we have deployed the first RDK routers with containers already in production in, in the other ecosystem. And now this is a big promise from Purple. Uh, they have app stores, but more so it helps and streamlines releasing those applications. Uh, decoupling a monolith of a CP, allowing application development providers like us release our applications faster uh, to those platforms and, and to standardized interfaces. Uh, so Purple has gotten pretty far, quite far already on, on standardizing the APIs, so we don't need to do a tedious porting job. They have abstraction layers on the low level for, for the hardware, hardware abstraction layer, and, and they're also working on, on higher level abstraction layer, even to the point, which is still a bit of a promise, uh, that they could abstract these middlewares, these open source middlewares like Purple OS and RDK, but so that's still, still a bit of a promise. But the low level already gives us, makes our job easy. It's pretty easy for us to put our, our, our software on, on Purple. And, and that's what we're working today on. So uh, early next year, we'll have our, our solution 
the full solution with uh, advanced device identification, uh, advanced security, application identification, uh, and digital parenting available uh, also for the Purple customers as a container. Great, and then just to, to finish off, I was wondering, and you may have covered this already, but are there any sort of specific um, opportunities or challenges you faced in uh, commencing your work with Purple that you want to flag up? Yeah, so, so Purple uh, tries to rely on standards. It, 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 its uh, promise is also improving the security of, of, the, of, the, of the router. Uh, now, containers running them on uh, on kind of a mode where they are very restricted is of course challenging when we are accessing the network. And Purple is not ready yet. Uh, from its packet filtering and uh, and and from its uh, Wi-Fi Wi-Fi uh, kind of packet visibility for us, we'll get our solution there. But uh, we need to also help Purple to to build okay. uh, build these packet filters forward, and of course embrace the the Linux foundation so that nothing would be reinvented again, uh, and things that already work out there in Linux ecosystem would also be the way Makes they sense. are done in the routers. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Scott.